Sometimes you just can't get enough of something really, really odd. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 strange addictions. Oh, no. For this list, we're exploring the weirdest, most out there addictions. So don't expect to see such common examples as party drugs, alcohol, gambling, or smoking. To be considered for this list, there should be more than one documented case of the addiction, meaning that Margaret and her addiction to bee stings won't be making the cut. I really love stinging myself with bees. Number 10, smelling gasoline. Oh, oh Christ, that's good stuff. That's high test. Can that's I get good. a toot down Yeah, yeah, here? go for it, go for it. Sure, we did say no drugs, but this substance is really a form of fuel first and an inhalant second. Inhaling the fumes that rise from gasoline leads to intoxication. And your point is, if you don't like it, go upstairs. Considering the gasoline itself isn't consumed, just the vapors, a small amount of gasoline goes a very long way, and as such, is commonly associated with poverty. This addiction is known to be particularly prevalent in low-income communities in Australia. The effects of sniffing gasoline are fast-acting, hitting the user in a matter of minutes. Let's blast off and gauge thrusters, oh. Captain! Euphoria, disorientation, lack of coordination, a sense of numbness, and in some cases, hallucinations follow shortly after. Man, I love the smell of gasoline. Yeah? Gives you brain damage. Unfortunately, the health repercussions are serious, and death among individuals who use gasoline as an inhalant is common. She takes a sniff every 10 minutes and even wakes up in the middle of the night for a fix. Number nine, cosmetic surgery. I've had 125 procedures. From a cheap high to costly elective surgeries, addiction can take many forms. Body modification of any kind can be addictive, but while other forms like tattooing and piercing provide an addictive rush of endorphins and adrenaline as a result of the pain inherent to the modifications, an addiction to cosmetic surgery, which is typically performed using a variety of pain-numbing anesthetics, stems from body dysmorphic disorder, or BDD. They had told me that weight gain was part of kind of the, the side effect of having it. The exact cause of BDD is unclear, but it's characterized by an overwhelming sense of dissatisfaction with one's physical appearance. Plastic surgery might make you look good on the outside, but you still might feel bad on the inside. But I'd look good on the outside, right? Yeah, but you'd feel bad inside. Plastic surgery it is. In the case of cosmetic surgery addiction, an unrealistic pursuit of an ever-changing idea of physical perfection results in patients undergoing endless surgeries to appease their sense of dysmorphia. I'll keep on going until they hammer the last nails in my coffin. Number eight, tanning. It's it to each his own, to each his own. I like to tan. It's been unkindly labeled tanorexia by the media, but neither anorexia nor tanning dependency should be treated lightly. They're both serious conditions associated with mental health. A dose of vitamin D is great for health, so long as exposure to UV rays is minimized. But individuals who go to tanning salons daily or multiple times a day are doing more than pursuing unreasonable self-imposed ideas of beauty. They're drastically increasing their risks of cancer. What are you doing? Uh, got to keep the tan up. It's not a skin color, it's a lifestyle, Brian. Serious tanning addicts, like self-proclaimed tanorexic Trisha Paytas, may be well aware that their habit is a problem but just can't stop. If the one and a healthy thing that I do is gonna kill me, then oh wow. Well. A 2005 study published in the Archives of Dermatology estimates that as many as 50% of regular beachgoers could be considered addicts. Number seven, hair pulling. Oh, <laughs> pulling your hair out. It's a classic bit of imagery used to convey stress or worry. I was pulling so much then, I got rid of most of my hair and it was uncontrollable. However common it may be, it's actually a compulsive habit that affects an estimated 11 million Americans. This psychological condition, referred to as trichotillomania, isn't just limited to the head. Some pull out hairs from their eyebrows, arms, legs, armpits, or even pubic region. My habit is, I like to pluck my pubes. While more subtle than other forms of self-harm, 
Hair pulling stems from the same psychological need to exercise control over the human body when one feels a lack of control over other aspects of their life, in either personal or professional spheres. See, my scalp hurts right now. Like it hurts from pulling my hair out last night. In some cases, trichotillomaniacs even ingest their own hair after pulling it out. Number six, attending funerals. Dude died in a hang gliding accident. What an idiot. <laughs> Will Ferrell's character might have considered it the perfect pickup strategy in Wedding Crashers, but his tendency to pop into a funeral uninvited is a full-blown addiction for some. Luis Squarizzi of Batatais, Brazil, attends every funeral in his hometown, becoming somewhat of a local celebrity. From an outside perspective, Squarizzi might simply come across as an extremely community-oriented and sympathetic figure, but his habit bears too many of the classic characteristics of a dependence to ignore. I don't know what it's like to lose a father. He quit his job in order to feed his habit, and if he doesn't manage to attend multiple funerals a week, he reports feeling physically ill. As we all know, Lionel could be a bit of a curmudgeon, but he had the heart of a lion. Squarizzi isn't the only person suffering from this condition, but he's certainly the most open about it. Did you know him? No. He made it. Number five, drinking urine. So I just drank my own pee for the first time, and it ain't bad. I... The consumption of urine, or urophagia, actually isn't that uncommon. You'd keep your mouth shut if you knew it was good for you, buddy. People have historically consumed it for numerous reasons, including alternative health and beauty treatments or dietary regimens. Health practitioners strongly advise against it, however. Carrie of Colorado Springs opened up about her urophagia, admitting that she consumes almost all the urine that passes through her body. My urine does smell, depending on what I eat. She admits to loving the taste and believes it's beneficial to her fight against cancer. One man, on the other hand, is addicted to drinking not his own urine, but rather the urine of young boys, explaining that it makes him feel younger. Robert collecting the urine could be very traumatizing to the children if they knew what he was doing. Despite knowing full well that there's no science to back it up, he truly believes it fights the effects of aging. Number four, eating furniture. The reason why I'm not eating my own mattress is because I ate my mattress already. Looking for a convenient snack to pair with that glass of urine? How about the sofa or this lazy boy? Pika is a particular eating disorder where the individual feels compelled to eat inedible or non-food substances. While many pica sufferers are drawn to consuming inedible bodily substances like urine or human hair, other cases have been reported in which people begin consuming drywall I love everything about drywall and household furniture, particularly foam furniture stuffing. Adele Edwards of Bradenton, Florida actually buys secondhand furniture to feed her addiction, but first tests the foam inside to make sure it's the kind she likes. I just take little bite-sized pieces and snack on it all day. Vicki Cullen developed a taste for sponges and the foam found in her armchair during pregnancy and never stopped. Number three, coffee enemas. As they raise the bucket, 32 ounces of coffee fills their colon. Coffee, it's probably one of the most common addictions in modern society. But what if you're looking for something with a little more kick to start your day? Well, some people prefer to ingest their coffee from the other end by inserting a lubricated hose into their anus and performing a coffee enema. Why? Because when taken in the form of an enema, the caffeine in coffee is absorbed directly into the bloodstream, providing a quick and powerful pick-me-up, the likes of which a cup of joe could never accomplish. You don't drink it. I'm talking colonics. Good coffee enema. Leaves you clean as a whistle. <laughs> Pops up. Some people believe it has significant health benefits, although that position is controversial. Mike and Trina Elliott each gave themselves up to 100 coffee enemas per month. Her addiction is so intense, she does up to four every day. Number two, drinking blood. One of the most unfortunate things about being a vampire is that you have to drink human blood. I like to make a real evening of it. If you're a vampire, then drinking blood is a matter of survival. For the average day-walking human, drinking blood is considered more than a little odd. Blood is as important as water to me. Many cultures historically drank animal blood, like the Maasai people, 
but the consumption of human blood, also known as clinical vampirism or Renfield syndrome, can prove not only addictive, but also deadly. It's never a bad time for me to drink blood. The condition had previously been observed in psychological studies of extremely violent criminals. More recently, this addiction stems from an obsession with vampires, or a small minority of people who actually find that human blood cures them of fatigue, headaches, and other discomforts, relief from which these real-life vampires claim to not be able to find via any traditional medical treatment. You ever tried drinking blood? What? It works, you know? Before we unveil our number one pick, here is an honorable mention. But I usually save some in my mouth, just so I can have some later. Number one, eating feces. She wouldn't give him cake. This boy is something's up. Eating poop or coprophagia is among one of the more disturbing forms of pica syndrome. Scientists don't know what causes pica, although some believe it may be related to deficiencies in minerals like iron. But none of these obsessions works to compensate for nutritional imbalances. So its exact cause remains a mystery. And that is so oh selfish. Mm, it's good. Is it? Ooh. Is it sweet? Oh. <coughs> so sweet. Coprophagia can take three forms. Heterospecifics, the consumption of feces from different species, allocoprophagy, feces from another person, and autocoprophagy, the consumption of one's own feces. Apart from pica, coprophagia has been observed in severe cases of schizophrenia and individuals with Prader-Willi syndrome. What do you put in here that makes it taste so good? The strangest thing about this gag-inducing addiction is it's actually more common than most others on this list. Do you agree with our list? Can you think of any other extremely odd addictions? Never thought to do it. I always thought, you know, peace, stink, whatever, but... For more Stranger Than Fiction Top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And if I just peed on the ground, that's all those fluids wasted.